Hello everyone and welcome to this new Autodesk Inventor 2019 video tutorial. So we've previously gone through the basics and we've gone through how to 3D model a piston in 3D. So today we'll be 3D modeling a connecting rod or a con rod. So I've opened up a new IPT drawing standard mill. I will now start a sketch and I will select my XY plane and now before I start actually drawing I'll create a few parameters so I'll go and use a parameter and say add numeric um, one of them will be um, crankshaft diameter so a crankshaft DIA um, under equation I'm going to make it 48 mil press enter I'm going to add another numeric so this one is going to be it's going to be pin diameter so pin dia then I'm going to create another one it's going to be stroke so that should be enough for now my stroke my pin diameter is going to be 22 mil and my stroke is going to be 131 so yeah that should be enough I'm going to close it now I'm going to draw a circle right at the center and so as I explained in the previous video it is constraint to the origin by a concentric constraint I can now apply a dimension um, go to my list parameters and select crankshaft diameter because that's where it's going to join the crankshaft so the next thing that I'm going to be doing I'm going to draw another circle um, I'll hold control left click and select a vertical constraint between this point and this point hit escape so now my circle is vertically aligned now I'm going to dimension it I'm going to go to my list parameters and select pin diameter and accept it and now I'm going to add a final dimension between each center and that's going to be again my list parameters and that's going to be stroke so we have the basics for our con rod now we just have to draw around it so I'm going to draw a circle from the center again and this one is going to be 70 mil diameter and now I will I will draw a line here probably aligned with the center so I'm going to move my line roughly up to here up to here and now I'll actually use control set to undo this line and I'll redraw it again so I'll draw it maybe up to here and I'll go up to here and up and I'm going to draw another circle This one is going to be 64 mil. Maybe I'll make it half of that, 32. That looks a little bit better. Now this line, I'll make sure that it's vertical. But at the same time, I want to apply a tangent constraint between the line and this circle. 
and now I want to make sure that I apply consistent constraint between both. So I'll click on the point, I'll go on coincident, select the point, select the circle, so it's now coincident and tangent. So I can now apply a few more dimensions. So I want to fillet this or enter an actual arc. So I can delete this line in between. I can pull this line, this line down and I'll draw an arc in between. So I'll select both ends and do something like this. So I have the rough shape for my con rod now. I'll just need to dimension it. So my radius is going to be 47. And now I'm going to make sure that I apply a tangent between these two. That's now tangent. And now I'm going to add a vertical dimension. So this is going to be 40 mil, maybe a bit bigger, maybe I'll make it 41 mil. We'll make this 46. Um, I'll undo that, I'll leave it as it was, as 47. I will now draw another dimension between this line and the center. That's going to be 42 mil. Now I'm going to add another dimension between this line and the center. So that's going to be 20 mil. And now I will proceed to I will proceed to mirror these lines. So I'm going to go on the mirror command, select this line, this line, this one and this one, and click on mirror line. Just realize I need to draw my mirror line first, so I'll draw a line that goes all the way from this edge all the way down here. I'll select it, I will lock it or fix. I'll right click and turn it into a construction line. So I can now actually mirror it on the other side. So I'll select my geometry, use my mirror line, click on apply. Um, that's now done. So the next thing I will do, I will apply my trim command. So I'll type in X or click on trim. And I will do the same here. So that's now done. So I just need to make sure that I fully dimension it. So this line is at height. Um, our sketch is ready. So we can finish the sketch. And I will now extrude it by 18.4. And careful, make sure that you go on symmetric so you extrude it in both directions. And I'm going to click on OK. OK, so I will now start a sketch. I will select this face. I will now use my project cut edges to select the face that I'm using. Um, I'm going to slice graphics. I actually realized of I 
actually should be fine. So I'm going to draw on the rectangle. I'm going to draw a slot center to center. So I'll just draw it roughly and then I will dimension it. So I'm going to dimension it and I want my center to center to be 80 mil. And I want my width to be 9.5. And now I'm going to place, I'm going to add a vertical constraint between the center and this center. And now I'm going to apply a tangent between this circle and this line so it stays there. So I'm going to finish the sketch and now I'm going to extrude it. So I'm going to select the feature, I'm going to select the cut option and I'm going to use asymmetric this time. So in the first direction, it will go 8.75 and in the second direction, I'll say um, through all, so let's say 50 mil, that should be enough. So I will OK it now. I've just realized it is a bit too low, so I made a small mistake with the sketch, so I'll re I'll re-edit my sketch. So I'll go and slice graphics. Um, I'll project my geometry and I'll select this this edge. So I wanted my bottom to be tangent with this edge and not with the um, cut edge. So I will click here find the tangent right click on it delete it so now as you can see my sketch is now free and i will add a tangent constraint between this edge and this edge and i'll go and finish sketch um, it's now in the correct positioning okay so we're going to proceed by drawing a sketch on the XY plane. Now I'm going to use my slice graphics or F7. I will now project my cut edges and now I'm going to draw right over it. So I'm going to draw a line that goes from here to here and from here down by 10 mil. And I'm going to draw an arc that joins them to. And now we'll give it a dimension. So it's going to be 10 mil radius. I will do the same at the bottom. I will draw a line from this end to this end, from this end up by 32.5, oops it was going in the wrong direction, I'll do it now, 32.5, hit escape and now I'm going to draw another arc from here to here. And now I'm going to dimension it and say 35 mil radius. So that should be enough. I'll go and finish sketch. I'll go and extrude. And I will now find my profile. Self-intersecting 
and this one seems to be fine but it looks like there are some issues with that one so I'll go back to my sketch if in your case it's working just carry on with it so I'll delete this line and I will delete this line and I'll just draw over it so I'll try to make sure that it's snapping with the right geometry which is my arc and now I'll make sure that this point is coincident with that line okay so the constraint already exists let's finish the sketch and see if it now works still doesn't work I'll open my sketch again delete my second line redraw redraw a line from here 10 mil down and now hit escape draw the arc so I have to try to make sure that snaps with the right geometry and 10 mil diameter radius finished sketch to extrude it now seems to be working the bottom one as well so I'll go in both directions and I will say to next I'll say between this face and this face I'll click OK I will now start a sketch on this face use my slice graphics I'm going to draw a point around here now I will give that point a horizontal constraint with the origin and I will give it a dimension with the origin and that's going to be 36 mil apart finish sketch and now I'm going to use the hole command so I'm going to click on hole select my hole and for the diameter I will say I will say five mil diameter um, the termination is going to be that surface and I'm going to accept it probably makes more sense to draw it on the opposite side so I can mirror this feature afterwards so I'll quickly do that before I proceed so I'll swap sides and dimension it 36mm across
Oh, it's just a view. I'm viewing it from the one from the wrong perspective. So I'll use the hold command now. Hold tool. Five mil. Select surface. This surface. Click on OK. There seems to be a small interference between the whole um, this feature. So I will try to fix that. So I'll have a look at my sketch number two. I will find my tangent constraint, delete it, and now we'll move. I will dimension the distance between these two and make it 17 mil. And finish my sketch. So that seems to be correct now. So that's one problem solved. I will have a look and see my sketch number three and see whether it is still in place. So it has adapted well to the modification. I will now draw another sketch on my front face. Start to the sketch. Probably before I do that, so I'm not going to apply a fillet, two mil fillet, and I will use loop and select um, all of this feature. I'll click on apply. And the next thing that I will do, I will be mirroring all of these features across. So I'll mirror my extrusion two, three, and the hole and the fillet. When it says mirror plane, I will choose my YZ plane and click on OK. So it's now fully symmetric so far. So I'll now proceed to start a sketch on this face. I will now use my project cut edges. Now I'm going to use the offset tool and I'm going to offset this circle by two mil and I'm going to offset this circle by 60. Uh, sorry. I meant I want a 60 mil diameter for the circle, so I'm going to do it now. 60 mil, enter. So that's right now. I will finish my sketch and I will go on extrude, select this profile, swap the direction so we cut through. And I'm going to choose a distance of 2 mil. I'm going to cut 2 mil. I will now use the mirror command, the mirror tool, sorry, and mirror this extrusion across my XY plane. Sorry, I selected it. I selected the plane as a feature. I'll cancel it quickly. So I will click on mirror, select my extrusion feature, click on mirror plane, select my XY plane and click on OK. So it is now symmetric. I will now apply a 2mm fillet 
to this. Click on apply, close the menu. I will now use my chamfer tool. The distance will be three point, maybe 3.5, 3.5 mil. And I'm going to select these four edges. So it looks a little bit better. So I'm going to apply it. So it's just starting to look more like a con rod now. I will now use the fillet tool again. I will say 0.25 of a mil and I will fillet all of these edges. So our model becomes more smooth. Probably these four edges as well. At the bottom as well. These two edges as well. So that should be enough for now. I will click on apply. I am now going to start a sketch on my XY plane. Use my slice graphics. I am going to project my cut edges. So I'll draw an arc on top. I've just realized that I filleted it. So be careful what you draw. So I'll draw from the end of the arc to this end and down to the bottom. Now I will offset this arc. So make sure you select only the arc. And I'll offset it 4 mil. And now we'll draw a line to join it. So from one end to the other end. And from one end to the other end. I will dimension it now. So there are two dimensions needed. I will go on automatic dimensions and constraints and apply to see whatever is missing. So it looks like it's the angle of the line was missing. So I'll remove it. I will draw an angular constraint here. Um, I will apply an equal between this line and this line. Or I will just apply the same angle. So that's done now. I will finish my sketch. I will now go on the extrude command. So 
select my shape, both directions, cut, and now I will choose a distance of Um, whatever we did on the top one so I'll, I'll type in M that opens the measure tool so I'll left click here left click on the opposite face so that's 9.5 mil so when I'm, when I'm going to extrude this shape I will type in 9.5 I'll select the cut option and I will go on symmetric so it cuts it open like that and I'll OK it now um, the next thing that we'll be doing is probably applying a fillet so it's going to be a 5mm fillet in this edge and this edge I'm going to apply it and I'm going to apply another fillet of 4mm around these two edges so that should be enough I'll click on apply I will now close this and I will apply another fillet of 025 mil around these edges and click on apply. So that feature is done as well now. So I'll now start another sketch on this face. So you can either click here and start to the sketch or you can either select the face and, and click on create sketch. You can type in S and then click on the face. So I'm going to project my cut edges as usual and I will use an offset of this curve, it's going to be 0.5 for mil and now I'm going to try to offset this line as well 0.5 I'm now going to use the trim command to trim these two lines that we don't need um, I will dimension the offset here again and here so I'll finish my sketch and I will now extrude this down by maybe one mil or 0.5 of a mil yeah 0.5 seems more reasonable so I'll go for 0.5 I will now mirror I will now fill it to 0.25 I'll go on loop and select does it let me oh yes it does so I'll select all of this edge apply that's now done I can now highlight both of these features and mirror them across to the YZ plane for some reason it is failing So I'll try to mirror just the extrusion first. So I'll go mirror, select my extrusion, mirror plane, 
XY plane seems to work. So I'll delete this fillet and do a new one for both of them. So I'll go on fillet, loop, select this one, select this one and apply. So that's now done. Now we probably want to do something similar at the top. So before I do that, I'll actually add a small chamfer of maybe 0.5 of a mil. This two edges, I'll apply it. I will now sketch, I will create a plane, so I'll go on the plane tool, click on plane and then I'll click on this edge here and the opposite edge. So we've now got a plane that we can use. I will now use my start to the sketch, select it use my slice graphics, project my cut edges and I will now use an offset and offset all of these lines by one mil. So for some reason it hasn't let me offset this geometry to one mil. So let's try to do it to point, point two for now. What we'll do now, I will draw a circle here. That's tangent. I'll delete it first. So I need to know if I have a look at my model, get rid of the slice graphics for a second, and you say project geometry and project this edge here. That way you should be able to see how much clearance I've got. So let's say if I draw a circle now, up to there it will interfere So up to there is 14.4 mil, so I will want 13.4, which is that distance. I will now draw a line from the center. Draw another line also from the center. Now we'll trim the trim this half of the circle. Hit escape. I'll now delete my line. Delete my second line. Delete my circle. I should now I'll undo that for a second. So just remember that I needed to trim these lines. So I'll trim this line and this line. And I can now finally delete these other two lines and whatever is left from my arc. 
So now I'll add um, my dimension and I'll set the offset for one mil. Or try to create another offset from there. So if that's 0 0.2, so I need an offset of 0 0.8. And now I can draw my circle. I can actually delete this circle. I don't need it anymore. And I can draw an arc from here to here. So up to there is 6.2. We probably want a couple of mil of clearance or one mil. I'll make my radius 7 so I will now finish the dimensioning so I will give it a, give these lines a length delete these lines that I'm not using anymore So I'll give all of these lines a dimension and they also need a constraint so I'll say horizontal constraint, well in this case will be vertical between this center point and this center point. Um, the center of the radius also needs a vertical constraint between them. This line also needs a dimension. And all of these needs a dimension with respect to to this edge. So I also need to mark this dimension here, the distance from the center to this edge. And probably the angle between these two. So that's enough to define my sketch. I will finish my sketch now. I will go and extrude and extrude the whole thing up. So I'll say through all, swap the direction. And that should be enough. So I will now apply another fillet. So that will be 0.25 as well. Click on apply. And now I can mirror all of this across to the other side. So you can select my fillet, my extrusion, go on mirror, select my mirror plane, which is the X, the YZ plane, click on OK. It failed again, so most likely it's because of the fillet, so I'll delete the fillet for now. Go on, mirror, select the extrusion, select the, click on mirror plane, select my Y set mirror plane and click on OK. So I can now right click on my work plane turn the visibility off so I can do that on my model tree so visibility is now off 
and I can add another fillet around this edge. And click on apply. Do the same with the opposite. Click on apply. So our convo is almost there. We can add um, some more features, so we can, for instance, start a sketch on this face. Project our cut edges and now use another offset. And offset this by maybe 3 mil. I can now use another offset and offset this circle by maybe seven mil. I can now use the trim tool, um, trim all of these unwanted lines. I will hit escape, I'll create another offset, so in this case 3 mil again, I'll use the trim tool again and trim all of these unwanted lines, hit escape, I will now manually delete the lines I don't need anymore. So all of these can go. This one can go. So we're left with this. So I can now I can now apply a fillet and fillet these two edges. It's two edges, so it looks a bit more smooth. So that should be fine for now. I will add a dimension. So all of these lines need the offset dimension. So that's our sketch finished. I will now extrude it, select it, and extrude it down by 0.5 of a mil or one mil. So yeah, one mil is fine. I can now apply more fillets. So 0.25 is fine, so I'll select this face and this face. Click on apply. I will now use the mirror command select my my extrusion and my fillet both of them use mirror plane select my 
XY plane and click OK. So that's now done. So before we finish it, we'll just add some text here. So I'll go and start to the sketch, select my face. Um, I will now go on text. Um, type in whatever text you wish. So Conrad, for instance. Click on OK. So now your text is here. So I can also use a rotate tool. Select the center point of rotation. So here, for instance. You can type in the angle there, so I'm going to rotate it by 270 degrees. And now I'm going to double click on it again. And I'm going to change my justification. I'm going to say one center and middle. And now I can constrain, add a vertical constraint between this point and my origin. So now it's vertically aligned. And it doesn't matter if I make the text box bigger or smaller. It's and now I can, for instance, add a horizontal constraint between this point and the center of that line. So I'll double click on it. I can highlight it, make it bold, um, make it bigger if I want to, 6.10 maybe. Probably instead of applying a horizontal constraint, I'll, I've just deleted it. I'll probably be better off with a dimension, which I can edit anytime I want. So 60 mil seems fine. You can change the style if you want. So you have um, different text fonts. I'll leave that um, to default. I will now go on finish sketch. And you can extrude it, for instance, or you can select it. And then choose whether you want to extrude it up or down. So I'm going to extrude it in the opposite direction, up by 0.5 mil maybe. and accept it and now we'll select it here and fill it in. so probably I'll go on loop select each letter Or I'll try to to apply it to the whole feature and see what happens. So yeah, that seems to work fine. Click on apply. Accept the blends. Didn't blend the C correctly, so I'll cancel it and try again. So fill it. Feature. Extrusion 9. Apply. No, it doesn't seem to work, so I'll have to use loop. And do one by one.
that seems fine. I'll click on apply. So now if I go on my view tab, I can change the aesthetics. So I can change the visual style to realistic if I want to. Um, change it from orthography to perspective so it looks more real. And now I can then maybe change my my material. So instead I can select um, probably uh, casting if I go down to still still cast and I can select these few faces And to add these fillets as well at the bottom. and these faces as well. And I'm going to make them chrome. They look a little bit better now. So I'll put it back on orthographic so I can zoom in and out with more ease. So yeah, that seems much better. So I think I'll leave this tutorial here. Um, Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.